приходится выбирать дешевые решения с каким-то базовым, базовым уровнем функциональности. Okay, so we are safe again. Okay. Uh, oh, we can skip this one. Uh, do you do any kind of energy simulations in your practice? <clears throat> yes, all of this. Do you do all of this? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm sad to give you some information here today. And it's not me talking now. It's our technical committee in the European organization. And we have some of the best brains in our industry in that group. Okay. So... So what I I thought you were wanted to translate. Ah, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, Anders uh, спрашивает, используем ли мы программное обеспечение по uh, симуляции uh, зданий, энерго, ну, энергомоделирования. Uh, я говорю, да, использует. И, uh, uh, и Здесь Андерс говорит, что над этими системами работают как бы, лучшие эксперты в отрасли. Да, да. Угу. Ага, хорошо. Да, по спасибо, а то я что-то как-то отвлекся и забыл, что я перевожу. Окей. Because predominantly I'm, 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 I'm not pointing finger. Um, I don't want to be negative and, and criticize. I just want to provide honest information that Energy Plus uh, does not represent dynamic solar shading properly. It's very hard. You need to know a lot in Energy Plus to even come close to the potential of shading. So um, during my stay recently in Brazil, we have initiated with Sao Paulo University to in six months take a first step development of a plugin to Energy Plus um, to at least provide better results uh, closer to reality. Андерс uh, uh, сейчас говорит, но ну, не от не от своего имени, а от экспертов, которые лучших экспертов в, отр в отрасли. И, uh, к сожалению, uh, системы uh, моделирования, энергомоделирования здания, uh, такой, например, алгоритм, как Energy Plus, uh, не отражает <coughs> реально реального эффекта от а, применения а, системы динамического за, затенения. И чтобы, чтобы достичь реального эффекта, нужно потребоваться очень более серьезные а, работы по моделированию, чтобы хотя бы приблизиться к, к реальности. И да, добавляют, что в данный момент разрабатывают э, плагин, надстройку к Energy Plus, которая будет учитывать э, систему э, более, более реально так, как это должно быть. 
Uh, we also target that this plugin with, will also include, let's say, a guide uh, to do it properly as well, to show you the way, you know. Они создают вот этот вот плагин для того, чтобы такие эксперты, как мы, смогли правильно им, им пользоваться во время моделирования. Кроме того, они также и дадут нам руководство по тому, как, как моделировать правильно солнцезащиту. Um, and, and also, uh, you use IS, ISVE. Uh, we use yes, IS, uh, Design Builder, and TAS. Okay. Well, on IS, um, when I now mention IS, I am specifically only talking about one thing, and that is the calculation of solar shading performance combined with glass. I'm not making a comment on IS in general. It's specifically this function, and I want to stress the fact that we have a very serious and open approach from our organization. So I have been twice in Glasgow, we have meetings with IS, and there is a discussion going on to reach improvements, right? So it's a positive development. Anders поднял внимание компании IS к тому, как они рассчитывают солнечную радиацию, в своей модели он два раза встречался с АЕС в Глазгоу для того, чтобы поднять этот вопрос и, и решить эту проблему. Developed on our initiative in in Scandinavia, but it contains ASHRAE 2013 climate data from 3,700 locations around the world, and it's a, a calculating totally accordance with ISO 15099 and the comparative EN standards. Uh, this говорит uh, он про программное обеспечение оптимизации здания, которое включает в себя, соответственно, климатические данные от от Ашре по большому количеству мест, а также соответствует стандартам ИСО и стандартам Евро Евросоюза. Um, but uh, you will be provided with a file or you can find it on the YESO website and download it. doesn't cost anything at all. It's totally 100% free. Можно скачать вот с этой ссылки. Это абсолютно бесплатная программа, которая поможет вам правильно смоделировать систему. It's not a building simulation. Uh, remember the name, ESPO, Early Stage Building Optimization. So it's to, to give early stage advice of what glass and what shading to select. Это это не не программа моделирования пол целого целостного моделирования здания. Это программа, которая направлена для того, чтобы правильно подобрать на ранних этапах проектирования систему затенения. So by by choosing a shading fabric. Uh, in this example, it's an external, but you can also choose internal, obviously. You choose um, a, a material, you choose a glass, you click on this button, and in a few seconds, you get this, which is the G value without shading for that glass, and with shading. You see the light transmittance, visible transmittance, the U value. And this is very interesting, very often when I meet sustainability consultants, because people are not aware of that interior shading sometimes is very good to improve U values of facades. It's not known. Uh, здесь uh, достаточно простой интерфейс, uh, в котором вы можете выбрать uh, разные комбинации решений и сравнить uh, такие главные uh, 
коэффициенты, как G-value или U-value с без системы затенения и с системой затенения. И для многих становится открытие того, что, например, коэффициент теплопроводности сильно зависит от даже внутренних желюзи. So this is not to replace what you normally might do as consultant, but my recommendation is start looking at this as a benchmark, a comparison to advise you. Это продукт, который не не нужно как бы менять одну программу на эту программу, просто в этой программе вы можете uh, сравнить инструмент для сравнения разных разных вариантов и и посмотреть, как это как это работает. Okay. So, an example. This building, an old factory, was in 2016 refurbished to become small, very expensive apartments in London. Это здание, старая фабрика в Лондоне, которая была ну, переделана в лофт-апартаменты, в дорогие лофт-апартаменты. Uh, Which is in parallel with what you just mentioned that in Russia U value is the most important uh, known value and G value is rarely uh, discussed. But I would say, how could you simulate which they did in IES? How could you simulate at all if you don't have a G value on the glass? I would actually argue you are lying or you are you are faking something because it's not possible. If you don't know how much energy enters the room through the facade, how can you even guess the thermal balance in the room inside the building? Архитекторы рекомендовали поменять стекло в этом здании, но при этом, когда меняли стекло, единственный параметр, который был, это U-value, но не было предоставлено коэффициента G-value. И у Андерса большой вопрос, и как вы вообще смогли провести энергомоделирование этого здания без коэффициента G-value, который очень важен для определения теплового энергетического баланса. So, in September, when they had a showroom apartment ready for sale, uh, to show for customers, coming to buy the apartments, they opened the door after the holiday and it was almost 48 degrees in the apartment. И в сентябре, когда они а, а, построили это здание и начали продавать а, апартаменты, то а, открыв а, дверь, зайдя в апартаменты, температура там была 47,5 градусов. And on top of that, During holiday, all the water in the uh, toilet and in the kitchen and the shower in the in uh, the drain had evaporated, so it was open airflow from the sewers in London. So it smelled absolutely awful. И uh, хуже того при при такой температуре uh, вода из uh, туалета, душа, вот этих помещений начала а, испаряться, распространяться по помещениям и создала очень а, плохой, плохой запах в, в этих апартаментах. So, we have now um, a copy of the, the modeling that was done. And it was said, without any shading in these apartments, never above 27 degrees. But in reality, it was almost 48. Um, we connected South Bank University in London because the investor got absolutely crazy. He couldn't sell these apartments. So the investment was going dead. 
So we were allowed, or South Bank University were allowed temporarily to put internal shading and external shading on one apartment and make live measurements and comparing. And we see that internal and external shading would bring the temperature down, but not far enough. Uh, but sorry, the glass was already there and we couldn't change that. It was done. It was too late. Uh, what happened? Uh, uh, investor который вложился в этот проект, он не мог продать эти апартаменты в связи вот с этой проблемой в том, что нет нормального затенения, температура поднимается очень высоко, и есть большая разница в том, как смоделировали инженеры эти апартаменты и что произошло в реальности. Тогда решили попробовать решать эту проблему, но при этом понимая, что стекло уже установлено, со стеклом мы сделать ничего не можем, мы попробовали ставить внутреннее затенение и наружное затенение и смотреть, что происходит с температурой в апартаментах. И здесь видно, что температура есть в левой колонке, это при моделирование, как показывает, а в правой колонке в, в реальности. It's also interesting to note here that in the modeling maximum 27, internal shading would bring that room down to 25.4, external shading to 25.1. It's a temperature difference here on two degrees. In reality, we see here from 48 down to 34, or from 48 down to 29. That was the reality when they tested in real life. Когда они моделировали, без затенения получалось 27 градусов, с внутренним затенением 25,4, с внешним затенением 25,1. То есть получается, что там максимум 2, 2 градуса дает система затенения. В реальности же а, затенение... Внутреннее дало снижение температуры с 47 до 34 градусов, а внутреннее затенение с 34 до 29 половины градусов. So, so for you as consultants, I don't think I need to stress the fact really how important it is for you to be very aware of this, because you will be responsible for these results that you provide to your customer. Вам, консультантам, я, наверное, не буду объяснять, насколько это важно, потому что вы будете отвечать за за ваши расчеты, и вы должны понимать, насколько ваши расчеты должны соотноситься с реальностью. So, 80% of all buildings in Australia they succeed and 90% of buildings in UK totally fail. Um, this is a study we came across quite recently by, a, not us, but a, a, a scientific uh, study in, in the UK. And here is an interesting learning experience as well that I would like to share. 80% зданий в Австралии добились успеха. 90% зданий в Великобритании провалились. Почему? А, у нас есть исследование новое, которое показывает все вот эти причинно-следственные связи. So in UK, you are, it's mandatory to use IES for compliance, to even get a building permission. You а, have to do it. В Великобритании... А, обязаны использовать симуляцию энергомоделирования зданий для того, чтобы получить разрешение на строительство. But today, still today, 90% of all buildings fail significantly. And it's not 5%, it's failing 30, 40, 50% on energy performance. И 90% зданий по факту не в реальности уже не удовлетворяет требования. Okay so, okay. 
Yes. Let me know. Yes. It's not. It's not much longer. It's but very, uh, very interesting for yeah? us. Yeah. Okay. Good. So I'm happy to do whatever you mm -hmm. want. So Australia, on the other hand, already quite some years ago, they say we simulate the buildings according to performance, how they actually work. And they build it into the contract in the process, and there is a third party review on this from the start. В Австралии разница в том, чтобы в Англии симулируют на compliance, то есть на соответствие, а в Австралии моделирование на цели моделирования является эффективность. Вот. И результаты моделирования, моделирования в Австралии, они прописываются в контракте. И за это несут ответственность, соответственно. Также проверку моделей в Австралии должны проводить независимые, независимые эксперты, то есть модель проходит экспертизу. And today they are designing within 10% of the original target and all the results when the building is brought to life, it's posted online, which means that the customers, the tenants looking for new office space, they can read and find good performance buildings that, and they can trust the information. И сегодня здания, которые строятся, данные по эффективности передаются в онлайн, в открытые источники, вот эти рейтинги, и покупатели, арендаторы могут посмотреть, какие Здания, какие из них более эффективные и принимать на основании этого решения. So, buildings in Australia are three to six times more energy efficient than UK buildings. Получается, is a lot. Получается что в Австралии здания в 3-6 раз более энергоэффективны, чем в Великобритании. Next challenge. А следующая uh, задача. Lack of knowledge. And, and ignorance. Отсутствие знаний и игнорирование. And uh, here I, 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 I am honest saying we start with ourselves because we realized or we started in Essel to realize already 10 years ago that our own industry do not have the required knowledge needed for the future of sustainable buildings, etc. Здесь мы мы начали с себя. Мы, мы осознали 10 лет назад о том, что в отрасли а, нет квалифицированных экспертов, которые а, могут а, а, применять эти решения. So we have started an educational program in Europe now, so we can give certification to our own companies providing you telling you as consultants aha here is a company with knowledge required и uh, в европе они запустили курс uh, по обучению и uh, в результате и сертификацию экспертов для того чтобы можно было определить uh, кто из экспертов да, обладает uh, квалификацией для того, чтобы решать такие задачи. Forgive, I, uh, I forgot to remove this after Brazil now, because we are discussing this training program with Brazil Green Building Council, but I can take the opportunity to mention that today, this morning, I also discussed it with, with uh, people from the Russia Green Building Council, and they are very interested to cooperate with us on this. Um, but you see here, there is a, a one-day trainer to become an advisor. You, you add on one day, you become an expert. <clears throat> we, will, we will develop, or are halfway through developing on ESPO, how to really do the, the simulations properly. And this is the database of performance that we have established. And we look further how we can build. And then we are adding 
one day training that should be ready <coughs> sometime October, November for consultants, architects, etc. To, to bring more knowledge into the market. И сейчас а, они предлагают а, тренинги для, для того, чтобы понимать эту систему. И есть вот такие следующие ступеньки квалификации. Первый, один день человек проходит тренинг, он является а, консультантом, советником. А два дня он проходит, это уже эксперт. Да? Дальше сейчас они разрабатывают а, полу, дополнительный полудневный тренинг, для, под которым как нужно использовать программное обеспечение. И также а, более а, следующий уровень – это тренинги для архитекторов, а, консультантов, а, проектировщиков систем фасада и механических систем. So it's a start, a new beginning. Это начало нового начала. So, I mentioned about evidence and tools, and uh, here we have just, here is a pre-study of the, the Bayham in London. There will be a full scientific report on this project by early next year. Uh, the authorities, National Energy Foundation, SIBSI, and BRE are involved, and it also includes a deeper study on the present simulation softwares used in the UK building industry, like I mentioned before. So it's, it's uh, when I talk about the shortcomings of IES uh, today, I mean, it's going to the authorities in the UK, so it's not me talking. <coughs> part of, of I will translate. Yeah. Uh, то есть какие есть а, а, моменты? Вот это а, здание, кейс в Лондоне, который говорит про те недостатки в программе АЭС, а, это привлекло к как бы, серьезному а, исследовательской деятельности, в которой вовлечены такие организации, как БРЕ и СИПСЕ который uh, сейчас вот предварительно уже анализ проведен и uh, к начале следующего года будут сделаны определенные выводы и эта проблема будет uh, решаться с uh, властями Великобритании. And the, I mean, obviously, World Green Building Council have a lot of very good communication. Um, not necessarily only on solar shading, but you can easily see that so dynamic solar shading has a, a natural part here. You have uh, the STIA study on manual blinds. There is another big scientific study. And uh, we have probably the, the best technical guidebook, very, very technical, uh, on how the calculations on solar shadings are made free of charge, and then some political uh, papers, etc., and ESPO. All these files and whatever, I have prepared a bundle for Alexei here, my colleague, so he will make this available for you. Uh, вот эти руководства, есть uh, очень серьезное техническое руководство по проектированию uh, ограждающих конструкций и систем uh, затенения. Uh, есть также документы по различным политическим тенденциям и регулированию. И все эти материалы он предоставит нам для, для изучения, для использования. Okay. So, conclusion. As I mentioned before, uh, very, very basic, common factors for success successful buildings. Uh, in my view, it's, it's smart solar shading, automated, combined with the, the right choice of glass. Right sizing of HVAC, an example, the cooling. It could be the heating, it could be the lighting. I mean, other technical installations in the building. It, they need to be put together in one package all together, not in separate boxes because that will allow you to budget the whole package for the investor and the owner as well. And, and it all starts with 
having an holistic working model. It's actually about people talking to each other much more than we do today. And I, I always say, we don't need to wait for Elon Musk to come up with a new invention. The solutions, the glass, the shavings, the controls and everything needed is already available. We just need to start using this working model. And every successful building I showed you earlier, and I have more, they use the holistic approach. И а, подведем основные а, выводы для успешного а, проектирования и строительства зданий. Первое. Это а, умная автоматизированная система затенения вместе с правильным выбором а, стекла. Второе. А, это система отопления, вентиляции и кондиционирования, которые правильно, правильно подобраны и с, с правильным бюджетом. И это система, которая была рассчитана а, в, целом, в целом на здание, на помещение, на, на зоны, а не какие-то конкретные а, компоненты. И третье – это а, целостная модель планирования и бюджетирования. Так, чтобы все аспекты а, проектирования и строительства а, обсуждались. А, в, и нам, нам не нужно ждать а, сегодня появления а, Илона Маска с новыми идеями и решениями. На самом деле все, все эти решения а, существуют, а, просто их нужно а, рассматривать, принимать и учитывать в, в проектировании. Because I always say the best kilowatt hour of energy is the one we don't need. It's about preventing something from happening instead of allowing it to happen and then try to fix it afterwards. Самый лучший киловатт энергии это тот киловатт, который нам не нужен. Это слоган Андерса Ола. Что он означает? Означает он том, что лучше изначально не допустить этого киловатта чем потом а, 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 бороться с его появлением. Yeah, this I mentioned already. Uh, so cooperation, a reminder, means working together, not working at the same time, because this is what we do far too much in the building sector today, and we need to stop doing that and start working together. И Кооперация говорит о том, что это работать вместе, а не параллельно в одно и то же время. Yeah. То, что сейчас происходит в, в строительной отрасли. На этом презентация Андерса закончена. Если есть у кого-то какие-то вопросы, может быть, то можно их задать, написать мне в чат или или в скайп Uh, does it does uh, they teach uh, students uh, to do this to yeah. understand this uh, at university or something? Uh, in university or in the night course? I no, in university or at your courses? Um, well, well, it's it's two separate things. Um, I, I am visiting a lot of countries around the world. I have so far never found a single university teaching architects and consultants properly on glass and solar shading that I'm talking about. It doesn't happen. Uh, so that's one side. So the training program that we have launched now through ESSO is purely through industry initiative. So we are training uh, existing companies 
and we will be offering trainings for like you maybe in Russia early 2020. We can bring that and translate and maybe, I don't know, Alexi could give the training here and provide the material in Russian. So it's done by us, no universities or schools. Uh, yeah. Может быть, maybe as a solution for students and for free and quick courses, for example, we did a course online and free free of charge, and everyone who is interested in subject can just go to online platform and to study themselves. We, we are looking into that as well. Um, you might think that ESO is, yes, we are, let's say, a fairly big organization, but our budget is limited. Uh, we, we only have 16 plus members. Mm -hmm. um, so it means uh, we are lacking resources. So we are launching these uh, trainings now towards a fee, and we have decided to invest that fee. So maybe 2020, we could have a first advisory course online mm -hmm. because there is an investment to be made. All illustrations needs to be made and everything. So it, it starts at like 20, 25,000 euros minimum to have something like a two hour course or something, but we are looking at full day trainings. So we are moving in that direction, but it will still take some time. Сейчас, ну, в организации ESO они ограничены ресурсом, да, и первое, что они хотят сделать, это такой реальный курс, который будет стоить денег, и эти деньги они планируют дальше как бы реинвестировать в развитие. Возможно, сначала появится физически, а потом в будущем они разработают онлайн курс. Ну, и Просто он говорит, что разработать хороший качественный курс, это может уйти порядка 20-25 тысяч долларов. Um, I can I can today only uh, comment on Energy Plus and IES because there we have obtained knowledge. Uh, on the others, um, Francis, for example, I know is a very old uh, calculation model. Um, I would be surprised if it's better than the others. Um, and then beyond that, I couldn't comment. I'm very careful to speak about things I don't know uh, because I don't want, I want to have a positive approach. Uh, I don't want to say something bad if I don't know. You know, it has to be uh, uh, clear information based on clear, in reliable information. Um, the only software in the world so far that ESO as an organization say we support and endorse is. It's actually ESPO that I showed you briefly, and there behind ESPO is a much bigger software for a full builder, probably uh, really for you guys, called Ida Ice. I know this one. You know it, yeah. Yes, and there is very, very um, huge catalog of buttons. Yeah, yeah. Massive. Massive. And there is option to change. Um... Yeah, you can build your own glass and everything. Yes, yes, yes. And what's, so, I mean, Per Salin, the owner of Equa in Stockholm, is a good friend mm -hmm. of mine since six years. Uh, and I took the initiative to create ESPO because I said our industry need a simplified version of either ICE is too complex. 
we need to have something easier on top. So ESPO is actually just a simplified user interface on top of the engine of IDA ICE. So all fab solar shading fabrics, all new spectral data now on glass, etc., that is being implemented through ESPO will, when you, if you run IDA's next time you upgrade IDA's, it will be implemented there as well. So there are about 4,000 consultants now in Europe using IDA's. At this moment, uh, we have reached about 10,000 users uh, of ESPO. And I say in five years, I would like to see 150,000 users of ESPO around the world. And it's not because I, I work for ECWA or anything like that. It's because we know we can trust the information. It's so important for you to have correct information. And it will be really, really positive for our industry. So we have a win-win here in all senses. So this is why I'm so strong in driving this. So very, I'm really happy that at least you know about IDAIS. Because that's the brain behind yeah, this. Yeah, it's very spread in Scandinavian countries, and people don't know, they don't use it. Mm -hmm. Another source of no. information. No, it's dominating Scandinavia, obviously, but it's also uh, quite significant in um, Germany, in France, they have offices. And interesting enough, Australia, that I mentioned, who simulate on performance on buildings. Some three, four years ago, Australian authorities approved Ida ICE to be used in Australia. We are presently, ECWA is negotiating with a representative in Sao Paulo. As a spin-off, I was in Brazil. Um, I was in Mexico City last year in October. They are negotiating with a representation of Ida ICE in Mexico. So, which is very positive. I don't know. I mean, the softwares are available in Russian. So I think there is. It's not uh, because. Uh, I'm not sure. Um, I don't know. Uh, I use it uh, when I um, have master's degree. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it's uh, Tallinn University of Technology um, yeah. bought uh, this version for me. Ah, okay. Yeah, I know they do that. Mm -hmm. I know they do that. But I, I can be open. I mean, it's a, with greetings from Mr. Salim that if I travel a lot and if I find somebody in a new country that would be interested in taking the hand on, on IDAIS in that country, it will also be very positive for the users of ESPO in that country. But I'm afraid, so, it's my personal opinion, but I think IDAIS is not very, um, very, uh, not very, um, very um, not very good in the HVAC system. Design. There are not many options oh, yeah. for this, and it's not. Ve it's very difficult to uh, depict uh, um, geometrical. It's very difficult to make geometrical. But then I think you did it a long time ago, or some time ago. One year ago. One year ago, because what I see. You import the 3D models from the architect over IFC. It's completely connected now to LEED and BREEAM certifications. I mean, so it's very, it's it's very, it's, uh, it's, it's a lot. It's it's really moved. And I'm not an expert on IDAIS or anything. I only relate to what I have seen, and and uh, compared to what I've seen on other softwares, I'm simply impressed. And it's not for everyone to use because it is a, a, a massive tool. So you need to continuously work in it. And you just mentioned you had an educational version. Uh, yeah. Might be that that contributed for you to see less functionalities. Because it's, it's completely the equation based. So you can actually model your own models in IDAIS as well. You create your own models which you cannot do in other softwares as well. So, um, yeah, but I mean, that's, IDAIS is not the discussion I should have because I'm a solar shading man, you know. I see the implementation of ESPO and there I'm really engaged in everything. Uh, but uh, we also know that 
what we get from IDIS and ESCO, we know that we can trust because we have proven it over and over again. So, and, and for me, that is, that is very good. I mean, that's what I'm looking for. You know. Yeah. Yeah, I, I totally welcome the opportunity to uh, visit. And if still somebody out there around Russia or wherever you are, I, I certainly hope it's not the last time. It's my first time in Russia. Uh, fantastic experience this week. And uh, we already have good things developing. So we have defined reasons for me to come back, maybe at the later part of this year, etc. So let's reconnect. And we make sure you get the documents and all that. Um, you can download ESCO, etc. And, and keep in contact with Alexa here. Is 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 uh, my my right hand here now in in, in Russia, you know. So uh, thank you very much. Thank you.